Let's take a look here, guys, out west with the Red Hot Clippers taking on them Phoenix Suns tonight. Uh, three, three and a half is what this, uh, what this line has been. There were some questions as far as whether or not Durant uh, with the hamstring was going to go if he was available. But Ski, I, and I know, I know your love for the Clippers here. I know, I know you got mad love for them. Um, the hell with the Lakers, you all Clippers. Uh, but tell me here, man, is this a freight train we want to get in front of right now? You know, last week I, I was thinking about it and I saw a bunch of home games coming up for the Phoenix Suns. I saw they were healthy and I thought that it would be a situation where they could go on a streak like how the Clippers had, had gone on a streak after being pretty terrible. Um, Suns still at 3-13 and 13 against the spread their last 16 games and are going to be without Kevin Durant tonight. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know how we got that picture. <laughs> going to be without Kevin Durant tonight. So um, I just can't trust the Suns when they have two out of the big three. Like, if you have two out of the big three, I at least need KD to be one of them. So combination of that, and then this is a what, playoff revenge situation, I believe, for the Clippers. Clippers have been playing good basketball. They've uh, covered seven of their last 10 games. And when I just look at it matchup-wise, like the Clippers have guys who they can put on the opposing team's best players and make life tough for them. I don't really see a whole lot of people making life tough for anybody, you know, um, for as far as Phoenix defenders for the Clippers team tonight. So I have to look towards the Clippers. It does make me feel like, you know, how it opened up. It's a little bit too easy, but uh, – I do, if I have to put my money on it, I think the Clippers get the job done tonight. Yeah, it, it's kind of hard, RC. I mean, you know, looking for spots maybe where they're going to get overvalued, but I, I mean, no Durant. I mean, Booker and Beal aren't anything to, you know, to laugh at, but really with how good they're playing here, how do you see this going down tonight? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one way that I want to tackle this is actually towards the, the team total of the Clippers instead of the spread. Um, one thing that I looked at, I know uh, Ski mentioned Durant out. For some reason, with Durant out of the lineup, they're four and one against the spread. So I kind of want to stay away from that. But one thing that I want to take advantage of is the fact that the Suns, they look like a better defensive team the last two games. But if you look at who they played, um, they played uh, what the Magic. They had to travel across the country right before the new year. Then they played a Blazers team who missed uh, some key players. Anthony Simons was out. I think Aiden was out as well that game. So both of those teams went under their team total by a huge margin. But I don't think the Suns' defense is that is that great, in my opinion. Um, some of the things that I look at on the Clippers' side, if you look at if you split it between the first 15 games and then the rest of them with Harden, uh, they're just a, a drastically different team. I think the the first 15 games of the of the season with uh, James Harden in the lineup, um, they went over their team total just three times. In the last 12, they went uh, over their team total in eight of the, the last 12. They're just a more, much more balanced team. Uh, some of the things that I saw that were different was they score about five more points per game in the paint, and they shoot, they make two more threes per game um, with Harden in the lineup. He just creates that space for that team. And, you know, after the first 15 games, they started to gel, and that's where they're clicking right now is, is really on the offensive side of the ball. So for me, um, you know, uh, if you look at trends as well, Clippers 6-0 straight up. In the last six road games as favorites, uh, they covered five of them, went over the team total in five of them. Um, for me, I think the team total is the way to go here. I think the, I think the Clippers get up and over that number. Ooh, all right. Expecting a uh, little points here, maybe some value on the team total. Rob Vino, what do you think about this uh, this Clippers team here? You trust them on the road? Well, Ronald said a lot of stuff that I totally agree with, starting with his team total over and then ending with the fact that the Clippers as a road favorite, Joe, have been good. I mean, he mentioned 6-0 and straight up. Five of those are straight are, are gets a spread wins. And that's a kind of a situation where we couldn't trust the Clippers before on the road laying points. Um, Ski make good, made a good point about when you have the big three, if you're only going to have two, one of them has to be Kevin Durant. It can't really be Booker and Beal, not for me at least. It doesn't give them enough um, interior play. Not that Durant's a great inside force, but the seven-foot length certainly is more helpful than having two guards. So, I, you know, a lot of the fundamental matchups point to Clippers. They've got a day of rest here. 
And if I just look at Phoenix real quick at home this year, and again, they've been banged up like they are tonight without Durant, but they're 5-13-1 and one against the spread at home. That's horrendous. Um, but they do go over at home, 12-6, and six, which again points me toward Ronald's play of Clippers team total over. There actually is a home underdog 0-2 losing the games by eight points per game. It's hard to say anything here to back Phoenix, which – you know, it's the NBA. Phoenix probably go out and win by 20. But if I'm just using what I see in front of me, it's hard to play the Suns right now, Joe. I'd have to look Clippers. 